Okay, let's say one meter and a half. No, let's say two meters to make sure. So this is the first point and we'll do some other copies. Let's keep the distance of let's see how it would look on two. Maybe three. And what first we'll set the number of copies to ten. And the distance will be two, not three. No, it doesn't look like in there. I think it's two meters. There were ten cables, right? Eleven. Okay, so ten extra copies. Uh, one, two. I think there are one meter in between as they were just in the top side of the tower. Okay, so these are the side points here. Now we're going to create a set here. Okay. Let's test how it would look at this distance. If it's not nice, we'll change this first distance. If it's okay, we'll copy it with <coughs> side views. So the closest should connect with the lowest. rotated there's another bridge on the left side or why is it at the beginning so this is one bridge Okay, okay. So now we should, uh, okay, it looks okay. We should copy the other points. Then just connect the lines so we have 3D lines. Copies and I'll go to this second intersection. Okay, so we won't need the vertical lines.
Okay, and now uh, can you connect the other cables in isometric view? Because now you have some precision. So start with the just connect with the second. So You see the line. I don't know what's that. No, we should do in team play rather. Let's uh, eliminate those lines and we'll copy it in play the 3D line because it will remain at the same position. No, no, we'll... Yes, uh, because of copying we found those problems, so... Yes, but let's copy it in plane. So, look in plane for the model and we'll copy it in plane. Because you see the bridge is not straight, that was the problem. We would need the red line to copy along the red line or somehow draw it every 10 meters, but... Okay, just manual take it to 10 and then move it to the deck. So say 10 or 15. Hit enter. And now this you should move to touch the deck. Okay. I'll pause the recording. Okay. No, no, not yet. Let's finish uh, to make them cables, not just lines, and then you can mirror. Hopefully, I'm not sure we can mirror it as uh, it's not straight, the bridge. We might need also to do do again with uh, lines. But uh, now let's uh, have a look again at the PDF to see the section of the cable. Maybe you have a diameter there or we'll presume a diameter. wanted to look in the PDF, not anything 3D. Too. You will only see it in plane if you have everything. If it's in 2D, you can only see in plane what's 2D. So go to plane view. Uh, okay, no, no, double click uh, and remove from hidden, say to wireframe, that's why we can see it. On the right side, the other right side, low, low on the right side. On the right side, instead of hidden, uh, pick up uh, wireframe. Okay. Yes, try to measure uh, some diameters here we'll need. I know it's okay, but I want some values because this is a projection it's approximate somehow. So we need to know the diameter of the cable, the diameter of this ending as we're going to design a cable with the endings and with editable span, let's say. 
and then we'll adapt this, we'll rotate it according to your 3D line and extend it till it touches the end. So we won't do the same operation, we'll only create a prototype of cable and we'll adapt it to every situation. So for this we'll need some measurements. We'll go to basic dimension line. Okay, twenty. Move. Move. Okay, fifty. Anchor plate should be 60. It's greater, and I think the other is still 50. So, uh, just a second. See, that's approximate, so the 70 will take 60, I think. Okay, that's what I needed, yes. Just a second. And measure also, okay, it's for 60, we'll do something for the ending after it has the plate. I'll show you, we can model that part as well, but not with the bridge modeler, but just with extrusion. We'll do that also. So, uh, let's first uh, like show how we can design this piece. We'll have to, we'll start with 2D. Yes, I'm recording. Okay, with the basic line. So, Let's say we'll have 0 0.35, 0 0.35, then 0 0.2. So now what I'm doing is drawing half of the cross section. So 0 0.2. Uh, 4.6 Okay And now for the axis we'll go point fifty point twenty five and then actually I was interested in the difference so it's not point twenty five but rather 0.15 okay and now straight and because it's the difference between the two diameters okay and now the last is 0.1 I'll explain in a second what I'm doing now This is too big, we'll shrink it. So this would be half of the section that if rotated will result in a 3D object. 
Okay, actually that won't be. Okay, we'll leave it like this. So uh, we'll also extend this a bit. Okay, and then I'll copy it upwards. And remove this line. Okay, so this is basically, uh, let's say, a sample cable. We will uh, adapt then to O. So this is only half of it, but we're now going to transform it into 3D. Yes. Uh, well, I do you have a detail with the other piece? Because I don't, so I presume it's the same. But I'm sure it's not the same, but... Yes, but I don't know the detail there. If you don't have a connection to the tower, I'm just using the same ending. I don't know. Yes. Well, we said we we're going to draw them uh, from side views so as we draw the 3D lines. Uh, as I see here now, they start from the middle somehow. So we should change also to the middle. But I'm going to show you an example. And then you can move the 3D lines to the middle. All 3D lines, you just say stretch entities and we move them to the middle. And they will start from the same point. Okay, so we'll just make it constant then. <laughs> okay, so I live like this. Uh, now we're going to do the following going to bonus tools convert from 2d to 3d okay and now we're going to use that function for round objects solid of revolution select the outline this is the outline and the axis is the inner line so from this point to this point number of division uh, let's say 20 360 degrees yes joint surfaces So this is this can be one ending if you don't like it circular we can change it but it looks nice circular okay so this object we'll use now with 
hit control C and go back to your bridge. Can you select the bridge? The one with the cables. So without this one, just uh, the bridge. They are very far one another, that's why it looks. So please deactivate the, the previous. So deactivate the foundation deck reader. Without drawing 19. 19. 19. After 18. So, because they are very far one from that. Okay. Okay. And now, uh, we will do like this. We will uh, look uh, for our side view. So, uh, just a second. Uh, look from side so we can see a cable. No. Uh, look at the drawing from the side. Okay, leave them off me. Uh, and we should deactivate the other bridge, it's confusing with two bridges. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is hit Ctrl V. Uh, leave this a bit to me. Ctrl V, and the problem is this is drawn the other way around, so I'll say rotate. Then I'll say freely in 3D. This is our object. Okay, and now I'm going to move this. So first I'm going to move in this view and then in plane I'll center it on our actual cable. So I'll fit it here. I it clicked. I don't have room on my desk. I feel with paper. It clicked badly. And I'm going to rotate this. Yes, a uh, longer, yes, according to the line, but I don't know if it will let me in this view. No, think because it's not correct yet. You won't see it in 3D as we we have it somewhere placed so we're not in plane yet that's what i'm telling okay if you'd like to see it in 3d we'll need to go in plane and this is where we actually have this object very far from our bridge but we can just move move it like this Where is the bridge? Here is the bridge. This is the bridge. Uh, well, on the cable, we need to rotate it according to the cable. Okay, we actually need to rotate it so. Okay, rotate. Leave a bit to me because you'll do the rest <laughs> and you'll watch the recording. Uh, so I was going to select this one. Okay, so now we have the cable. 
in somehow in plane so we should start to start to see it here Just a second, it's not a line to our cable, it's a line to another line. Or so this one. Okay, let's rotate it so we look again from this side because now it's in plane but it's not according to our cable so this is another rotation we're going to do rotate Okay, just a second, we'll do this uh, with a view. It's complicated like this. Uh, just a second. So I'll create this view. Go to tool. No, I'll just a section would be enough. The first is more complicated, the others will just move and rotate. The problem is the, the fact that the bridge is not straight in plane, it's curved somehow. Okay, let's wait a bit. Without dimensions. Okay, but now we'll need to rotate the section of the cable according to <laughs> Okay, no, we start to do something, but it's not what we, we needed because it's not a correct view. We needed a side view. Just a second, we'll uh, create a side view and we'll rotate it there. Because we can rotate it to 3D, but we, in order to do that, we would need an echo. So, for Andre, create again to create a section. Mm -hmm. 
Nu, voi o întrebare, dar trebuie să întrebăm să știi din ce ai arătat. Nu, eu am zis, adică... Și pur și simplu mă întreb... Care e diagonală? Care nu știu ce. Da, da, da. Uite, cum mă ajutați suprafața? Eu nu știu, în cadrul exercițiului, știți ce determinați spre la asta elementul ăia? Sau distanța de funcție de la așa? Ceva de genul ăsta? Și mă ajutați acolo. Cât va? Ea tot mai mistake, pentru că I didn't point outside the circle, so it knows where we are placed, so it created the front view of our pillar. Basically, we'll use this to create all, all the cables. All this, all this view only needs to be created once. I will align in this view. Yes. It can do this only if we use macro. If you we use macro symbol, then it uh, only stores where the macro symbol is placed, even if it's scaled. And then uh, it will change whatever it plays, but we didn't do that. We only use the 3D model. So in order to have an intelligent object, we need to use... It's actually not called macro, it's called smart symbol. So a smart symbol is a unique symbol that if changed can, uh, can be edited afterwards. Okay, just a second, why is it not? So rotate. The fact I'm using this associative views is the fact that I can rotate, let's say, in plane. The other, if I look from the front, it will only let me rotate along a, a line I have to define. So, no. I'll speak up the middle of the circle. But it didn't do what I needed. No, let's do it again. Rotate. Hit the object. Well, it's not a perpendicular view, that's the thing, it looks as if it's not, because it's in space. So we'll rotate it and then check if it's centered. So, just a second. This is a certain point. Ce Okay, now we'll set the angle according to your cable and uh, then we'll extend uh, with uh, the stretch entities. So we have the second uh, using shortcuts. So it's essential that I I uh, imported the angle of the cable because now I'm going to extend just the ending. So it was hard for the first because the other will just be some simple rotations. So now I'm going to extend this until it meets this point.
let's also check here. Well, indeed, it wasn't uh, aligned to. Yeah. Let me think how we can uh, solve this. Maybe this, but this I think is just a transport point. No. Yes, we need um, the cables are not in plane. We should. Uh, uh, well, one easy solution would be, but we wouldn't have the all this change in profiles. That's the problem. So, okay, no, I won't. I will delete that. But I'll show you how we can. What one alternative will do for the other cable? We just need two clicks, and it does something, but not exactly what we need. But we can edit and still obtain what we need. So we have a function here. We go to tools, architecture, rough. Uh, no, it's this uh, steel uh, timber element. So this is mainly, f uh, let's say if we have a, what, okay, we have a cross section here for cables 20. Okay, I think we did it before. So what we'll do now is make it centered so this is a cross section and if we do like this it's easy but we only have one section we don't have that variability that we need because now we just click one end and the other ending and we'll have a, a section that can be changed afterwards the second oh where is this can you fix okay and this is uh, changeable so it's easier to do, we can actually change the diameter, let's say it's 20 or 10. But the problem is with the ending, we don't have it, so we would need still something like the first. So it's easy to position this type of element as we just click on the endings, but we don't have this detail. You can uh, draw the cables with this first function and then just the ending try to fit it with this part. So just the ending to fit it, not the entire one. So you can use the last function I've shown you to create the cables and just the ending that is in contact with the deck to try to align it with this detail, with this 3D object. Yes, so you would uh, remove the cable part just to have this uh, enlargement that is in contact with the deck. Okay. Yes. Yes.
it will be the last point so you divide the, the, your road at each rising point so you know that the last point is where it should go up so I can show you a simple example now uh, so basically So this can be one area the other will be the second area and now for the first area I'm going to make a composite element for the other another composite element so it will be with terrain composite element click on this one okay right click as I wanted only this one. Oh, I think it joined with the other okay in order to well there are two pieces of lines but uh, it's no problem I'll just move it one meter to the left Okay, I should show this into an empty drawing it's because it also has the bridge with all its models. Yes. It's easy. You just right click and say assign drawing files. You can go from 35 to 50 let's say or we can go up to 999 drawings just that they are somehow in order uh, so I'll do again this example maybe okay close so this can be your road and now I'm going to divide it in several elements so I think I'll do like this to know where it's divided so I'll divide it wherever I have a rising and I'll create this through several um, composite elements so I'll go to composite elements pick this one and right click Okay, it's, it's still detected. Maybe I can split it like this. Okay. So this is the first object. Let's try without so I think I shouldn't have right clicked so just click on this one and let's click again so it's okay you know, if you click right click it will automatically link with the other lines so what I created now are four uh, four paths I'm going to export separately so this will be export composite this will be line one one two And uh, okay, last four. And now we're going to the bridge modeler. Now 
I'll say import root and here uh, I'll start with section 1 and this can be as first root and the division can be as far as you like even greater than 25 meter because what is actually important is the fact that we know uh, that at the end we'll have some variation so you see we have basically two points that define the line now uh, it doesn't matter if we have one point or we have 200 points what uh, was is important the fact that we know that in section 2 we we'll get some elevation so now uh, we can go to section and we'll also import the other roots so we can show the higher after current route we'll export the second part of the road yes so we can make a bridge with all these roads that's why I say if we divide it at every time we need some elevation point it's really easy because uh, we'll know it doesn't matter how many division it has we're only interested in the last division it's okay we only need to select up until we have the variation so up until we have that uh, rising that's last root okay uh, I said number four Okay, and now uh, for the last, the second point, the second point, I'll, I'll say I'll change the coordinate at this stationing point. So on Z, I'll say 10 meters. Then I'll go here on 2, on uh, the second line, edit stationing point, I'll say again 10 meters. And now we're going to uh, uh, assign a cross section okay and for the second route I'll assign the same cross section it doesn't matter Okay, uh, what's important now is uh, let's try to export one and two into a single road or we'll go like this file. Uh, hmm. Why don't we have export route? I think uh, we don't have it because we don't have the cross section assigned to all. Let's assign to all. Same cross section. Now we can export root. <coughs> we will place somewhere this bridge. Maybe save this in case it doesn't bring us the wanted results. So okay, let's rotate it a bit. Well, we have the cross section, but I'm not sure we got what we wanted. I wanted a variation of 10 meters upwards. So we have this big cross section, but uh, it's hard to tell as uh, the line is too short. I should have uh, drawn a 100 meter line or 
a kilometer line because uh, we can't understand from this uh, just a second so that's a bridge section but my line is I didn't measure it it was okay let's do this again This will be somehow the same area. Yes, unfortunately. You don't need to do that. You just need to offset or what? Parallel lines. <coughs> well, it's actually parallel. Okay, offset polyline, but you just need to one hit enter and uh, enter again, and you have to. This is not offset, it's uh, drawing a parallel line. Actually, offset is called parallel line. No, parallel. No, 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 that's different. It works so totally different than what you would accept. This is offset. Click on an element. So, mention the distance or click where you want it and which side. Uh, you clicked very close. So, again. Parallel lines, click on the object, click where you want it. No, no, it's a uh, 10 meter is nothing, the bridge is pretty big. Okay. take two lines together why would you take two lines they are different bridges yes but you just change the route so you can save the first bridge and then change the route and apply again. We can't from beginning start with two lines. Yes. It won't do something okay because it tries to do a single bridge with the two. So you can do the first and then change the import another route and generate the second. Uh, now let's see. Again, this will go to tools. Train. Okay. 
no 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 we just we i was right clicking if you do right click it will automatically join with any lines in contact okay if you just left click it will be two separate elements so the first will be this one and the second will be this one Now we're going to the bridge. And the same. Okay, and what I was saying was regarding the transition. We know that in the last point, let's make a ten, 2 meters height. So we'll edit the stationing point and say the coordinate is 2, the other was 0. And here we'll do the other thing, we'll say it's 2 and we'll go to 0. So you see now in this elevation point we get from 1 to 2 1, 2 So this is the beginning If we like to, be, to make the transition we need to approximate all points So if we want from point 1 to change linear to 0.5 we would need to assign values also for 0.4 or 0.3 for instance if I'm going to move here uh, edit station in point I'll say 1.5 then on 3 1 the last is 0 0.5 and now we get variation from 1 to 5 it varies linear this is how you can control the area in which you get the variation I, I can do the other thing here Okay, and now we just export the roots to check things. So this is one component, but we would need the other as well. I think it only imported this, and now we're importing, exporting the second. Okay, but it did not connect the uh, two points. Uh, the only problem is we are based on a fictional bridge because um, when I did the training with the bridge company, they came with these points noted uh, by No, the only problem is identifying the points and the problem is uh, you can divide the points uh, manually but uh, it's uh, an extra work that normally a bridge designer shouldn't do because if i do the same thing here so if i export the entire i'll have a connected bridge if i export this i can even let's say 
do that uh, chamfering. Okay, let's do on this one. Yeah. No, no, don't rotate anything. Okay. We can now export this. Okay, you make it on the entire. So just right click and it will automatically create your right click. Right click. Left click once and then right click. No, no, no. Just first left click. Now right click. Okay, and right click again to finish. Okay, it's a compost and to export the points. Call it one, doesn't matter anymore. Yes, and then access the bridge modeler. Okay, so we can change the point of, let's say, Yes, assign a cross section. Okay, now we can change the height of any of these points. Here are not that many points, so we can to five. We can change the stationing point. Let's see five meters. And then if we wanted to make it more linear, we can see here four. Yes, I told you, uh, I'm going to ask uh, the co my colleague who is with the road design, because this is the road design job, they should give you the red line and the picketing of the area. So normally you'll get the numbers as an input data. I'll show you also how to create that numbering on a line. So basically you can associate the number where you need to heighten the section with the input data that you normally receive. As far as I know, the terrain module has a function that can divide and give you also numbers. Uh, yes. Yes. No, normally it's uh, if you have a 3D polyline, you can generate two profiles. One would be the profile in plane that we are seeing now, and the other would be the profile in elevation. And the program can associate the two profiles and give you that shape. 
The alternative we've been working on was to just draw in plane the shape and then change it here manually the height of, it, of every point. But the only problem in this method we've been using is the fact that you cannot identify, the, this is an example is too simple, uh, as opposed to your bridge where you cannot identify exactly where is the height, where is the point in plane. I told you, you can just... Uh, It's a picketing function. I have to ask my colleague from the road, I told you. So this is already something outside of the bridge. As when I did uh, with the uh, bridge company, the training, uh, they had this picketing. So as an input data they received from the road, they had the points like this. So it looks something like this. And they had for every, I don't know, 15 meters, they had the point. And in the distance, I said, okay, 15 meters. And it, they had different numbers for each point. This is what they received from the road designer. Okay, here was two, of course, two, three, four. But this was the input data. And I, as far as I know, Alplan has a function, but uh, it's not my specialty. I have to ask my colleague how you can do this picketing automatically so you don't have to do what I'm doing now, change the numbers. But uh, I'll ask about this function for picketing. And then you can associate in plane. You see, you have a pile between four and five, let's say. You know, to when importing the route, you give the same uh, step, let's say 15 meters, and you'll get an association. So you can associate the plan with where you should do elevations. So this is normally input data you'd receive from the road designer. But I'll ask my colleague because uh, Alplan also has a road module. And maybe it uh, will show me how you can do this automatic, so not as I'm doing now, eight. Because, look, well, let's presume I'm doing this, nine. Just finish the example. What? I stopped. Okay. And yeah, our last would be 10. So if I'm going to use this we already exported the data, so I'm going to import it again. And here I'll say 15 meters. Okay. So these are the points. I don't know why I have more than we did some extra approximation. We have more than we had on our play. 15. I'm not sure we exported the same. Let's export again this file. Okay, we export it now. We going to access this. I don't know, it had some points at the curve, I think. You can visualize the points that's added. So here it did a closer division.
So we have 15 apart from this curve where we we said it does some point. So if we wanted to do an elevation between five and six. Five and seven, let's see. Okay, and now export root. No, we need to assign cross section. Let's check if it's items. Okay, so basically you need to somehow adapt the point. So in this example, we gave this rise. If it's on a bigger area, you need to do the interpolation between the points as it will change only that point. The other will remain the same. We can also do rotations, but this is mainly how we would do so your bridge has portion where it's up. To approximate the other variation, you know, it's quite easy. For instance, if you have this the bridge this long. So this can be your bridge. And that, you know, it's up here, it will go 10 meters. And what you still know is the fact that it's every 15 meters you would like a variation. So I'll say like this. And basically to know the variation of the point, I would have to measure this segment. So place some dimension lines, but this is how I know the value of each point. So if I I, I had uh, 10 meters here, the, this is 8.048 whatever. So this is how you know the linear variation of each point at a certain distance. So this is mainly how you do the linear interpolation of uh, the height of the bridge so you'll know the height in the middle but for the other heights on a big example like yours it might be more complicated to approximate the z value so you would do like this and this is how you determine you divide it as many points as you have so you know the value of each coordinate And this is also how we can control between how many points it should do the variation. Okay. Okay. So first solve with the cables and then uh, I'll also ask my colleague to if there's any function to do automatic numbering of the points. As far as I know, there should be. Yes. Yes. Yes.
Yes. Yeah. It can give us the height only that uh, we need to create a digital train model and we tried last time. If we don't have a variation in plane, it won't be able to create that profile. So we would need a 3D line in order to create a vertical line that we can export as LPR profile. Uh, if we have it 3D line, we can export a line that defines the profile of the bridge. So exactly as if drawing this 2D line, we can do it. We can export it and uh, use this to become a, a line that defines the height of the bridge. And then let the bridge modeler combine them and create automatic, not changing each point manually. But we can do this if we had a 3D line, or a 3D line that has also variation in a plane. Because if we try to convert this profile into a 3D line, it won't create a digital terrain model as it's in plane itself. Or one alternative would be to create a point of file manually. We can export the coordinates of this 2D line and then uh, arrange it in Excel or in Notepad so it looks like an LPR profile. Okay. Okay, okay. And we'll talk to see 